So thank you again for uh, joining our online webinar overview of the Master of Advanced Studies in Sustainable Finance and Development here at the Geneva Credit Institute. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nathan Sussman, and I'm a professor at the Geneva Credit Institute at the Department of uh, International Econo Economics. I'm also the director of the Center for Finance and Development and co-director of this uh, program. I'll hand it over to David to introduce himself. Thanks, Nathan. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm David bastet and I'm wearing a couple of hats. Uh, the first one, most important one, is the co-director of this um, of this program, but I'm also um, based in Brussels, where I'm working on sustainable finance reform, um, and uh, and I'm also involved in uh, in teaching of uh, SDG investing program for executive um, education. Um, so yeah, that would be a real brief description of, of of what I do. We will get back to that a little bit later in a couple of slides because it is very relevant for what we're going to be telling you about today. Oh, thank you, David. So, uh, move the slides. Do you see the slides moving? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the agenda for today's meeting. So we'll briefly introduce the concept of sustainable finance and development. Uh, we'll talk about the program focus and content, the main features, uh, objectives and key benefits, the teaching instructions, the way we assess you, and some practical information to be followed by uh, a Q&A in the end. But you can already uh, type in your questions in the Q&A button on the, on the WebEx uh, as we go along and we'll address them uh, at the end of the meeting. Um, and, but you can start typing them as we speak. So let me begin by introducing briefly uh, the topic of sustainable finance, why we think that this is important right now. So sustainability has become uh, a major global challenge. Uh, so the climate uh, is obviously a major concern of human society, uh, everybody, all the leaders around the globe are stressing the need uh, for the transition to net zero, for adaptation, carbon offsets, et cetera. Uh, so the need is out there, it's well known, but uh, what is less known maybe to the general public is the fact that we need a lot of money uh, to do this transition. And quoting Mike Carney, and there are a number of quotes about how much is needed per year, but estimates are running from $3.5 uh, trillion per year of investing for 30 years, and some estimates talk about $9 trillion per year. So this is a huge financial undertaking, and that's why sustainable finance uh, is really crucial to fulfilling the, uh, the target of net zero. In terms of uh, sustainable finance, so there's a huge increasing literature and plan of action on behalf of a number of stakeholders. And so at the moment, there are major efforts to set standards, uh, be it the EU taxonomy, be it the ISSB, be it the IFRS, these are voluntary accounting standards, global, and many others. Uh, regulators are getting into the picture. Again, the EU regulation, the EU taxonomy is probably the most, uh, it's the biggest one at the moment. But also here in Switzerland, uh, the Swiss government with the new Swiss climate scores is, uh, is about to intervene in terms of uh, setting and monitoring uh, compliance uh, with climate targets. Uh, there are supervisors, bank supervisors, financial market supervisors all around the globe that are changing the incentives for institutional investors and financial institutions more generally in terms of where and how they can invest in terms of compliance with achieving the net, net, uh, net zero uh, emission targets. Central banks have also, uh, again, in their capacity as regulators of banks and also providing uh, macroprudential 
support have also emphasized this. And finally, here in Europe, uh, there's a major effort by the European leadership to uh, move this thing forward. Now, we talked a lot about the climate because the climate is, is the most urgent, the more pressing, and uh, the one which is most talked about uh, in terms of the public sphere. But the UN has established in 2015 17 sustainability goals, which relate, uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, to every aspect of our society, uh, of global society. So these are goals that relate to no poverty, zero hunger, health, education, gender inequality, clean water, uh, affordable energy. So some of them are covered in the climate uh, and the environment concerns, but a lot of them are what we call societal goals, uh, and including also peace, justice, and strong institutions and governance. So these cover a very large spectrum of uh, activities that all need finance. So sustainable finance is not just about financing that transition to net zero, but also in terms of financing the other the 17 sustainable development goals of the UN. So as you can see, uh, sustainable finance uh, is, is going to be a very, very big thing in the world, in the economic world, in the financial world, looking forward for the next foreseeable future. And it emerged uh, again in the last 10 years or so, and it's gaining momentum. And our mission here, and that's why we, uh, we're offering this program here at the Geneva Graduate Institute, is to educate the next generation of financial analysts, consultants, uh, et cetera, that would uh, drive this sustainable finance revolution. It is a revolution because we're starting from very small amounts of money that are currently being invested to trillions and trillions annually for a very long period of time that will have to be invested in, invested in a sustainable way. Okay, so I'll, uh, after providing the big picture, let me uh, uh, shift to uh, uh, hand the ball over to David, who will talk about uh, the specific Swiss and Geneva environment. Yeah, and, and before before we go directly to uh, to Geneva, let me maybe go back a little bit to the uh, to the point that Nathan made a little bit for before to really give you a full perspective and why we believe this program is right for people at this particular moment of time and why we are still ahead of the curve, but not necessarily, um, um, but, but, but the moment is just ripe to do it, to do it now. The reason why I'm based in Brussels and what I mentioned before in the introduction um, that I am involved in uh, in the sustainable finance reform is my role with the European Commission, where I am member of the platform on sustainable finance. The platform on sustainable finance is responsible for helping European Commission introduce regulatory changes that will tackle uh, greenwashing in the market. And it maybe sounds a little bit uh, obscure, and it is probably kind of difficult to really pinpoint how this will affect um, jobs and why this regulatory change might uh, influence and should influence your career. So maybe let me elaborate really quick on, on that. So by doing that, by introducing those several reforms that Nathan mentioned about SFDR, EU taxonomy, um, a corporate sustainability reporting directive, all those names might be, you know, just codes for you now, but basically what it will make is that it will be the biggest catalyst and a review of um, financial products that are today present in financial markets. Morningstar just uh, uh, reviewed and issued a, um, a, a, a research that shows that only 18% of current ESG products that amass to $4 trillion uh, under assessment are meeting the criteria of 
EU taxonomy and what Article 8, so-called Article 8 funds, are, um, uh, are defining as sustainable. This means that once this law becomes law of the land, which will happen in the next year or so, it will create a massive momentum for the whole financial industry to review what they have and change the way they invest okay and here comes geneva which is which sort of thinks about itself like the future of geneva is sustainable finance and this is the, the the strategy of the region strategy of the of the city itself and if you talk to leaders um of of geneva canton and and switzerland per se they want to be a um a trailblazer in this uh, in this market this is why me and Nathan, we thought about creating this program and bringing it to the market because we see the massive demand for people with this, um, uh, with those, with those skills, especially in the city of Geneva that manages so much um, uh, private and corporate, um, uh, corporate um, uh, um, wealth. So this is why we believe that now is the right time, and Geneva is in particular, a great place to do it. The map that you have seen on the previous slide, it's exactly mapping the whole, the whole um, industry, all the places where you can find um, a, a, a job, uh, partners to build the project with. It is a great place where public or uh, institutional money can be connected with, um, with, with impact investors. We believe that this is the perfect moment um, in time and perfect place uh, to really embark on the career in sustainable finance. And before we go to the uh, to the next slide, just do one exercise. If you still are in doubt, if this is the right moment in time, just go on LinkedIn and Google sustainable finance in job search. You will see the plethora of um, of job opportunities in this in this market. And you know. We all we not only have the feeling that this is the right moment, but also we have done an extensive research with actually human resources and we have identified who are financial institutions looking for right now. And this also has changed, right? Before in the past, let's say 10 years, a decade, it was, you know, people who were sort of maturing in, 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 in financial sector, they were looking for something different. Maybe they, they started looking at, at sustainable finance and you entered this, uh, this, this area with a, maybe a salary cut, but, but a, a job with a purpose. Now it has changed. If you talk to HR people, HR managers, and people who are recruiting professionals for those jobs, this has, this has changed. Now they are paying actually a premium to get a right talent um, into those positions. And because this is a relatively new um, area for, for or, or, or a career path that you can thrive, um, they are looking for people with certification, with uh, some experience, some quantitative knowledge, some maybe practical experience. And in response to this demand, we, me and Nathan, we came to a conclusion that this this is the right moment to actually create a program that is addressed to uh, young professionals and young graduates, and um, and this is why we are here. Nathan, sorry for such a long, lengthy uh, and passionate speech here, but uh, uh, but but did I cover everything, or or there's something I should still uh, mention? Maybe one thing in in maybe relation to to Geneva, because you will also we we. I, I've been talking about European uh, reform a lot here, and you say like, why would why would I be bothered if we are in Switzerland? So Switzerland, as well, has introduced uh, some regulatory reforms. They are based on a little bit different system than the taxonomy system. It is based on so-called uh, TCFD reporting, uh, climate reporting. It is much more on a voluntary basis. Um, than the, the European market um, is, but it doesn't change the fact that, first of all, European asset managers are sometimes based in Switzerland, Swiss companies are present in the EU, so those systems will intertwine. And 
you know, this, this skill set will not limit your careers to only Europe and Switzerland, but also taxonomies are being created as we speak in all major financial markets all over the world. We're talking about UK, we're talking about the US, we're talking about uh, China, uh, BRIC countries. So this wave of, of, of regulation and, um, and frankly speaking, revolution of sustainable finance is really hitting hard and it will only grow and pick up in the coming years. Okay, thank you, David, and uh, I'll move forward and, and, and see how we translate this uh, vision, this passion into uh, a, a teaching program, a one-year teaching program. So uh, let me emphasize from the beginning and repeat maybe something that David said uh, a couple of minutes ago is that the aspect of investing in a sustainable way is much more complex than calculating uh, internal rates of return, NPVs, for those of you who had exposure to accounting or finance, or even uh, algo trading and, and the quants and the kind of things that people were priced for in the industry before. Uh, what is required in terms of sustainable finance, because as I've shown you before, these are very complex systems that finance is affecting both the environment, but also society in, in almost every place on, on earth, in, in, in the entire globe. And therefore it requires uh, a, a slightly different set of skills than your, your standard uh, MBA in finance or even an undergraduate degree in, in finance. And this is what we're trying to provide in this program. And so we begin by Mastering, and I'll go into detail in a moment, mastering the core foundations of what we think is necessary to be successful in this uh, new world of sustainable finance, what is prized and valued by potential employers. So you'll get a lot of these foundations. Uh, you'll be involved in a, an applied research project, uh, team projects, what we call capstones. Uh, you will benefit from an internship where you will be able to uh, get practical training, but also potential connection with your future employer. And in terms of the offerings that we have in the Graduate Institute, uh, we can offer electives, which are not limited to finance, but they're related to impact evaluation, environmental law and policy, climate change, international law, corporate governance, et cetera. To put things more concretely, uh, I have on the slide here uh, the structure of the program. So the program is a one-year program where in the autumn and the spring, uh, you'll be taking courses. Uh, all the courses are in person. This is in person and these are in small groups, small classes here at the Graduate Institute in Geneva. So we begin uh, in the in the first panel of the of the slide. We have the foundation, what we call the foundation courses, and there you'll be getting exposure both to microeconomics of finance and macroeconomics of finance. So these are analytical courses that will cover the main topics related to sustainable finance, both from the macro and the micro perspective. All kinds of the issues that we need to understand. Uh, in order to resolve some of the challenges in this industry. You will be spending time learning about empirical methods uh, to evaluate these policies. As David was mentioning before, one of the major obstacles for scaling up sustainable finance is what is called impact washing, green washing, where firms claim that they're actually doing something about the environment or something good for society. But these claims are not borne by any quantitative data. And with the legislation uh, and the regulation uh, that David was mentioning, both in the UN, Switzerland, and elsewhere, financial institutions will have the fiduciary duty to actually monitor these things. And they have to collect data and assess data and analyze. And again, not just looking at bottom lines of, 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 of profit and uh, loss PL statements, but looking at a variety of economic activities uh, that firms uh, engage in. So for that, we need empirical tools that we will learn. 
We will touch up on the classical principles of finance, obviously, but all, and then also give you some Python programming tools because, again, a lot of the data collection, which is involved in assessing uh, the sustainability of investment, requires uh, data scraping, AI, and so forth, and Python would be a good tool. It's a general good tool for life if you're going into this profession. Then we have mandatory courses, which are courses that are core to the sustainable, sustainable finance. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, but we'll give you principles on sustainable finance impact investing. Uh, we'll talk about financial development and inclusion, development economics and environmental economics, uh, finance for sustainable, social finance for sustainable finance. And I want to highlight uh, the sustainable finance in practice uh, which is the course that David and I will offer in the spring. In this course, you will be engaged with presenters from the industry, and it's with this, in this project, that you'll write your capstone project. In terms of, uh, you can think of it as a consulting, uh, a small consulting assignment uh, with the uh, firms and, 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 and institutions that will present their cases in this course. Finally, we have a list of recommended courses. Uh, however, uh, the structure of the program allows you to take any elective that you want to choose from the menu of elective courses here at the Graduate Institute. We have hundreds of courses, but these are courses that we think are, are uh, recommended that are very useful. So one of them is looking at ESG risk, uh, corporate finance, natural resource economics, economics of energy, impact evaluation, climate change, Etc. But again, as I mentioned before, you will enjoy the entire menu of elective courses. So if you're if you interested in the more political science, political economy type of aspects uh, of sustainable finance, you can take courses from the political science department here on international relations. If you're more of a kind of a, coming from a legal background, a law background, you can take courses from the law department, etc. And finally, in the, uh, in the summer, uh, although in some cases it could begin in the spring, uh, you will have the opportunity to have an internship uh, with uh, one of our uh, partners. So here again, I uh, switch over to David to continue the... Uh... Yeah. Um... Perfect. Yeah, I think it's one more. Uh, or or do, you, do you want me to talk about the program main features as well? So, um, I mean, okay, I already see that there are some questions coming in, uh, but we'll get back to them uh, in, a, um, in a minute. So, again, we're talking about the full-time program. This also includes the internship. We will try to place the internship in, a, um, in the time so that you can um smoothly graduate um in um in september 2024 uh we're looking at graduates professionals coming from all the sectors with some background in economics and uh, and finance we prefer that but we're not close to just that let's let's be let's be clear please apply there are a lot of different uh, cases we're happy to look at it we know that people have different stories um, but if you have the passion for the topic, we are here to uh, talk to you and we really are looking to create a well-balanced and great class of people. This is the first time we're doing this. This is the first year. You can make sure that we will pay an extra attention to, uh, to all of you and make sure that everyone are uh, taken, um, uh, taken care of. Uh, so, we're going to focus on very in-demand uh, skills. How do we know it? Well, we know it because we have a lot of experience working with the private sector, both on our research side, but also on the practical side. Me personally working here in Brussels with a lot of financial professionals, but also working with, um, with all the Geneva actors um, on regulation, on courses, on teaching, in, in uh, um, other, um, other capacities. So the Institute 
is a part of this ecosystem for already a lot of many years. That's why how that this is how we managed to establish those relationships and create the internships with the main um, uh, players coming from from Geneva region. And you, as a, as a student, will be able to to choose um, from the institutions. If you're interested in audit, you'll be able to go to to PwC. If you're interested in uh, asset management, why not uh, PPT, uh, Unigestion? If you're more looking at the startup scene, there is Swissox, there is Impact. Um, if you're interested in microfinance, we will make sure that, uh, that you will get uh, the right experience in symbiotics and many, many others. This is just the, the essence of, uh, of the partners that we, uh, that we brought. We are also working on um creating a cooperation with much larger inter international organizations so basically if there is anyone that is outside of this group that you're interested in you can count on on us to support and create the link because for sure we will get the access to um, cool. those those institutions what is important for us is for you to give you an exposure uh, I think that someone didn't switch off. It's, it's, it's mic. Okay. Still, just make sure that you need to mute yourself. All right. So, uh, going back to uh, to where I was, uh, what what we want is to ensure that all of you has the right connections. By the time you're done with the with the course. You have the network. You have an exposure to the to the key people in um, in um, uh, in the industry, and your career is ready to uh, to take off. To be honest, a one year mass um, is giving you the opportunity to be ready for the market by the end of next year, which is extremely rapid, and and uh, getting a quality education in a shorter period of time creates a lot of advantages for the market hungry for specialists in this field. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. Yes. We have no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. We have somebody okay. who's not muted. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's fine now. It's fine. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, So moving on in terms of our, uh, yeah, maybe I'll focus one, give one last word on the on the internship opportunities. So all these organizations you see are on the screen, and and many more uh, have expressed interest in 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 getting our graduates to intern, and but also with intent to hire uh, subsequently people in the industry. And the latest edition was not on the, uh, what just happened last week, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, we had an event with the IFC that came to recruit here at the Graduate Institute. And uh, the IFC is the, it's not a private enterprise, it's a subsidiary of the World Bank Corporation. And it's the largest impact investor in the world. It's employing thousands of people. And again, they came here to recruit here at the Geneva uh, Graduate Institute. Uh, and 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 you can count on on internships and employment opportunities uh, with organizations such as the IFC as well. In terms of our our teaching uh, methods, uh, as I said before, part of it is going to be analytical skill, and they'll be taught by the top faculty of the Graduate Institute. Uh, all all the professors here of the Graduate Institute are are uh, either in the in in the required courses or the electives. Uh, will be available for you if you choose from the electives. We also rely on leading industry practitioners in the practitioner courses and then the internships and partnerships uh, that you will develop uh, at the end of the program would also benefit you. So we're blending both very rigorous academic inputs together with practical and hands-on types of, uh, of training. In terms of assessment, so uh, this is a one year master program, 53 of the of the credits within the program are will be credited according to the course credits. So it'd be at exams or other assignments in the course. Seven credits will be allocated to the capstone project. This is the consulting project that will be 
conjoined with the uh, practical uh, sustainable finance course that David and I will uh, provide. There is no thesis requirement uh, in this uh, one year master. And that's what distinguishes it from uh, the longer masters is the, the fact you don't require a thesis. Uh, in terms of the admission criteria, so uh, this is, as David was saying before, we, we are looking for uh, people that have a background, preferably in economics or business, but we're not closed on that alone. It could be uh, anybody else who is interested in this topic and is willing to take the challenge of this uh, program. However, we do require all applicants to have a bachelor's degree, uh, a completed bachelor's degree. We also require a GRE or GMAT score uh, in order to be uh, admitted to the program. This is a very uh, selective, very competitive uh, program and, and one way to assess the quality of our students is through these uh, standardized tests. It also allows us to compare students coming from different backgrounds and allow us not just to give preference to students that have undergraduate degrees in economics, but when we're looking at other students that come from other disciplines, these standardized scores give us some indication of their ability to succeed in this uh, program. Uh, so, continuing on with the uh, uh, practical information, so uh, there's an online form. It's a it's a it's a PDF form that you can fill uh, on your uh, computers, and you send it uh, by email. Uh, again, the email address is here on the screen. It's uh, on the on the right hand side of your uh, of the PowerPoint. You can find all the emails and the web page, uh, and uh, it should be sent by email. So don't forget that. There's no automated application process. It, you fill a PDF and send it by email. We ask you to provide a CV in English or French, a motivation letter for why you want to pursue this degree, one page mass. Again, GRE, GMAT, uh, we accept the online versions of the test. Also, if you have an older test, from three or four years, uh, you can send it uh, to us as well. And even if you don't have the official score, you can report the unofficial score or even the registration uh, form uh, that you registered to the exam. If you couldn't take the exam uh, ahead of the deadline in January 15th, but you have, uh, or the grade is not gonna report it by the deadline, but showing us that you have uh, registered to take the exam and, and and so we, we would keep your application in the pool. Exactly. I, I think that one thing that, that needs to be underlined here is that this is, you know, the, the jury GMAT is not uh, the, 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 the backbone of your application. We, we, we require it, but we are looking at your profile in a very holistic, uh, wholesome sort of manner. And we, 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 we understand that some people don't love those kind of standardized uh, standardized uh, tests but so so think about it as an element of the application and again what nathan mentioned very very important we know that uh, the the 16th or 15th of january is coming close and if you don't have your gmat by then or gre apply uh, show us that you are registered we can you can deliver it uh, it, it it later there is still plenty of time until uh, until until September, um, uh, but uh, 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 so yeah, so 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 this is what I thought is is worth um, underlying. Okay, so you would need copies of your official transcripts uh, of all the grades obtained in your uh, uh, bachelor degree, or if if you had a master's degree, that's also it's perfect. Uh, so these are standardized things that your uh, registrars in your universities, respective universities, can produce for you. All the diplomas, your qualifications, uh, the teaching language in the Graduate Institute is English. So if you're not a native speaker of English, you would have to provide uh, English language test results. And we also ask for two reference letters uh, that could be either in French uh, or in English. 
The deadline for application is, is uh, January 16th. Uh, we will make decisions by February 17th. We will allow, again, for in, in some cases, if we're missing uh, a GRE score, a GMAT score, and otherwise uh, the application uh, is looks successful and good, we will contact you uh, uh, with respect to that, even if you don't have your GRE, but ultimately we will give the decision only after we have received your uh, your GRE or GMAT scores. In terms of tuition fee, uh, we're asking for uh, 35,000 francs uh, per year. This is the uh, required uh, tuition fee. If you're comparing it, if you're thinking about comparing it to our uh, the Geneva Graduate Institute's regular program, so you have to take into account that the other programs might cost less uh, in terms of tuition, but require two years and, and again, another year of living expenses uh, in Geneva, which could, could be uh, anywhere between 10,000 and, and 50,000 francs. So the fact that this is a one-year program and within one year uh, you get out in the market makes this price tag uh, look not that uh, high as it might seem at first sight. We're also open uh, to request, uh, requests on scholarships and discounts or payments facilities. If you cannot pay this upfront, we are we have a variety of, of ways to, uh, uh, to pay by installments. Our scholarships are limited uh, and, and they are, will be given uh, based on, on need. And uh, we encourage people from uh, low income economies, uh, countries to, to apply and, and, and we, we will have some scholarships for applicants from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds. In some countries, since this is uh, this is uh, continuing education, uh, you might be able to deduct this from your taxes. Uh, in some European countries, it is possible uh, to do so. Okay, so uh, I guess this ends the uh, the formal presentation, and we have about twenty minutes for. Uh, for questions, so uh, there is a Q&A button in the, in the WebEx uh, application. Like, I, I already see some, uh, some, some questions, so maybe I'll go one by one. Uh, yeah, you can see yeah, the chat box. So, so do we need a bachelor in finance in order to be considered, can we have a bachelor's in different fields? A question from uh, Alejandra, thanks so much. Uh, as, as we mentioned before, but it's worth underlining it again, we're not requiring you to have a bachelor in finance. You can have a bachelor in, in any other, um, other field. We, we just mentioned it as a, as a preferred because it sort of in, in some ways increases your chances for succeeding in, um, in this course. But, but again, if you have uh, some other background, we are, uh, uh, we will welcome your application and please do, um, uh, do, do apply. Another question, anything you want to add here, Nathan? No, no, I mean, this is exactly what we, we mentioned. We have a preference, but it's not a mandatory requirement. And, and that's why we have other ways to assess you. Joy is asking about uh, the scholarship. So as Nathan mentioned, we will, we have a, a, a pool of scholarships. I'm not sure if they are full scholarships, Nathan, but they are definitely some uh, way to, uh, to support um, students from uh, disadvantages uh, uh, backgrounds. Uh, you you want to elaborate on that, Nathan? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, the we will have scholarships. Again, it, it it depends on on how many applicants we have and how many we we need to support and whether people get full scholarships or or partial scholarships. Uh, so this is something that will be determined uh, after we see the applications and see and the successful applications, obviously the ones we admit and see our resources relative to the number of, uh, of, of people we have to fund, whether it's partial or full or et cetera, but there is a pool of money for, uh, for scholarships. So we have another question from um, Adani. Um, the concern for ESG issues seems to be much prevalent in the emerging or developing economies. How relevant is the program to ESG issues in the emerging economies? Well. Uh, let me maybe start by by answering uh, that from from my um, uh, uh, Brussels and financial markets perspective. Well, I believe that 
uh, even though the most of the regulatory reforms are indeed concentrated around um, around European financial markets and financial market participants, like fund managers, uh, um, et, um, et cetera, it does not mean that the companies that are uh, uh, located and projects that are located in uh, emerging markets will be uh, somehow uh, overlooked. First of all, the taxonomies and sustainable finance reform is uh, uh, is happening all over the world. So sooner or later, these uh, reportings will come also to to emerging markets. They are actually um, uh, being transposed or or developed as we uh, as we speak. And on top of that, there is still a big hunger for um, uh, for a common language and common assessment system of what is sustainable and what is not also in emerging markets. Emerging markets where actually a smaller investment can yield higher impact. Um, so definitely, I believe from my own perspective, uh, this uh, emerging markets is where uh, the, the, the biggest growth of uh, sustainable projects will uh, will appear and we already start looking and seeing signals of that it is it will be mostly because of the increased demand for those uh, for those projects right now a lot of money will have to go where sustainable projects are and because there are not as many the data that i showed you before not as many projects the the, the seek for uh, for those projects and investments will uh, will be will be very high in the coming years, and inevitably it will go in um, into emerging uh, markets. Nathan, you want to add anything on that? No, just the, the fact that in many emerging markets you have multinationals operating and they're subject to ESG. Uh, most, and it will continue to be so in the future. Most of the funds, most of the finance, will go from uh, north to south. Uh, figuratively speaking, and and, so we, and will be subject to ESG concerns. So, if a financial institution in in a developing country is uh, collaborating with one from a from an advanced economy, they will have to comply by all these standards. And and the and and and, and since we have a global capital market, uh, there's no way in which ESG and impact investing and all the kind of things that are under the umbrella of sustainable finance will not be relevant uh, for, uh, for emerging economies. And as I mentioned before, when I introduced the uh, 17 SDG goals, most of them and most of the investment on SDG goals would go to emerging markets. And, and so creating the financial instruments and tools on the ground in emerging economies to be able to absorb uh, the demand for these investments uh, will be necessary. Okay, we have another question from uh, from uh, Alize. Uh, what courses would you recommend we should take in our previous studies in order to best prepare ourselves for this masters? Nathan, I'll throw this ball to you directly. Okay, so if again, if you have a background in 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 economics or finance, I think you're you're pretty much set. If you're coming from different backgrounds, so uh, we plan to teach you everything you need, but brushing up a little bit on your quantitative skills. Uh, is something that will help you, uh, at least uh, in the core courses. So uh, going back a little bit on your high school math or something like that could be uh, helpful. That's kind of the only thing I would, uh, I would uh, do in the short time that you would have until uh, we start in September is maybe, you know, maybe brush up your, you know, quantitative skills uh, a little bit. And uh, if you're taking the GRE or GMAT, at the moment, you you have to you have to do it anyway. So uh, there's no special preparation uh, you would need. You you will get anything you need uh, in this program. Uh, maybe I can move to the next one on the internship. So the internships are uh, there's a variety of uh, there's some heterogeneity in the whether internships are uh, being paid or not. So some some institutions in Geneva uh, pay some pay less some pay more. And very few uh, the internships are uh, are not, not any, anything yeah. at all. 
But again, this is not a salary, whatever, it's an internship. It, it, and and the, currently the average uh, internship rate in, for our students, I mean, not in sustainable finance, uh, but generally speaking, is about 500 francs uh, a month. That's kind of the average uh, internship uh, payment for our graduate students uh, but, in, in but, other fields. But just to highlight Alejandro, that, that, that some of our partners we, we don't want to give the names and numbers just yet, and this will be very much clear to you before you apply. So, so this, this map will be very, we, we will be very transparent and you will know that, for example, institution X is willing to pay, to pay X amount of, of, of money, but, but some of those partners are, are, are paying much, much, much better than um, the average that Nathan mentioned. So, so. Um, again, I don't want to throw out the numbers, but um, but they're much more uh, cl closer to, uh, uh, to to something that you can find out there in the um, uh, in the market. The reason why is that those companies are extremely hungry for talent, and you should have seen and participated in some of the conversation that we had with our colleagues from the industry. Like we just mentioned, this masters, the the, the excitement the willingness to cooperate, it was right there, right? I mean, it just took maybe five minutes to, of, of not really convincing. They were, they were simply asking, where do we sign? We want talent, we, uh, we need specialists, we need people with skills early, now, yesterday. So, so this is definitely happening. That's why, you know, the, the money is not anything I would be worried about uh, in, uh, in, in, in this. It's, it's only about how Early, you can um, you can you can get there. Yeah, you can think, you, you should look at this as a stepping stone because most of these firms will want to hire you, and the three months or more kind of an evaluation period where they pay you something, uh, not the full salary after they hire you, but they 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 will take you as an intern with an intent to hire because they're very hungry, and these are financial firms, these are not welfare institutions, and. Uh, and, yeah. and the salaries in this industry are in Switzerland are, are very nice. As Nathan said, we are not moving in, in the international organization area where they famously don't pay interns. Um, we are, we are re in a very competitive market, hungry for talent. So, so honestly, money should not be the, 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 the problem here. Another question from Christopher, do you have age limits? Do you have hundred percent scholarships from, uh, from yeah, Africa, uh, Nathan? So, as I mentioned before, uh, I mean, there's no age limit. No age limit, yeah. And, uh, and there is, uh, and as a scholarship, as I said before, it depends on the number of applicants. If we have 10 applicants from Africa that are successful, we cannot guarantee 10 full scholarship for 10 students from Africa. But if we have one or two, we can uh, be much more, uh, you can expect to get most of the funding uh, through that. So, but that, again, we cannot assess this at this point, uh, since we haven't seen the application pool, uh, but definitely there is a preference uh, for uh, students coming from Africa and from other disadvantaged uh, countries around the world uh, in terms of uh, scholarships. Um, uh, yeah, so Alua is asking if will everyone get an internship and do you help with the application process? If yes, then how do you help with the application for other companies, even if they are not your partners? Maybe let me just start. Uh, I'll try to take it. So basically, we have a very good um, um, career office uh, at the at the Graduate Institute, and you are a <laughs> by no means a full student of the Graduate Institute. So you are uh, benefiting from first of all the network of the Graduate Institute, but also their their practical assistance. So you know whatever you can expect from a typical career office, it's happening. So networking, helping you write the application. Um, all this stuff. The second point I want to raise is that me and Nathan, again, this is the first cohort, and we want to make sure that everyone get a placement, that everyone succeeds, because we want this program to succeed, and we want our students to succeed, right? Because again, this we're doing this out of the passion, and out of um, uh, you know willingness to help this this sector grow. Right, and without the talent, we won't be able to uh, to make it uh, to make it a a success. So, so very much those incentives are aligned, and we will do everything we can to place you at the right place for you. 
So, so we will be for sure hands on uh, this process, making sure that everyone get the right, uh, the right spot. Anything you want to add to Nathan? No, I think you covered this. Uh, Good. Uh, so we also will help you. Sorry, sorry. Go, go on. Yeah, Lua has another question on the GMAT scores. The minimum. So we don't put any any official minimum, but as I said before, this is a competitive program, competitive uh, applications. So just uh, taking an exam, GMAT, and, and having a zero is not uh, obviously not going to fulfill that requirement. However, we have no cutoff uh, point uh, of beyond or b above or below which we accept candidates. This will be obviously decided as we see the application. So we have a limited capacity and uh, and and the GRE scores will be, as, as David and I mentioned before, uh, only a part of the uh, of what would be a successful application, a necessary part, but only a part of the successful application. So we cannot tell you right now that you need 160 or 150 or any specific number. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, it will be used in the assessment. It is competitive and it's not the only thing we will look at. So another question we have from uh, uh, Matri um, uh, about uh, if we're going to have a coursework in blended finance and climate finance, uh, many of these instruments facilities are debt based. Would you have course working underwriting and other financial due diligence? So all those questions, let me maybe start by, by answering this, Nathan, and uh, feel free to, to, to jump in. A lot of the, the classes and um, and knowledge that we will transfer to you on blended finance or climate finance or underwriting or, or bonds will happen in the course run by me and Nathan, uh, which will be uh, very much built about so-called practitioner scores. But what, what we're basically doing in that class is we will cover every topic in sustainable finance that is relevant and important. And among them, blended finance is one of the one of the big ones, uh, uh, the debt financing, one of the huge ones, microfinance, you name it, we got it. But what we decided to do is instead of me and Nathan just teaching and taking you through all of them, we are selecting the top practitioner in Europe or the States that is a leader in that particular field. And we invite them to teach you this, uh, this class on how those things are done in practice. We have tested all those people during five years of running another course in the similar field, but just much more executive focus and, 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 and shorter. So we have the knowledge, we have the network, we have the people, we have the case studies, and we will take you through every relevant um, uh, asset type, uh, construction, project financing type, whatever is out there, we will do in that, um, uh, at, in that course, it paid off uh, until now, so so I'm pretty sure that we will be able to uh, to deliver that one up to a standard. No, Nathan. Yeah, I have nothing uh, to add. But it, but again, if you're interested in the more legal aspects, as I said before, uh, we have a lot of electives uh, from the law department, and some of them deal with climate, environment law, international law, etc. Uh, so, uh, and again, also in terms of the capstone project is consulting projects. If you're interested in this particular angle, uh, you can tailor your capstone uh, yeah. project uh, to look at those kind of issues and we'll match you with yeah. the right practitioner and expert uh, to help you um, and, and mentor you yeah, in this project. Exactly. So, so, you know, just, just think about it. If you have a sustainable building bond or humanitarian bond, we will get you, we, we are inviting actually a person who created that bond with one of the banks in Geneva teaching a class about humanitarian bonds, right? If we're talking about the green bond standards, we will give you the CEO of Climate Bonds Initiative who will come and teach you the class on the bonds. So, so you know, every leader in any field that is related to civil finance will be, uh, will be you will be exposed to, to their experience. Okay, but we are running out of time, so let's jump through through some of the final questions. Elected from other institutes, the classes will pass there on other university campuses in person. I'm not sure how I understood this one. Um, everything, everything is taught on location here at the Graduate Institute. All the electives, everything is in the same building. Okay, uh, exactly. Yes, that, that is true. If this was the question, yeah, yeah. So uh, Christopher is asking if you're 38 and if you're eligible, 
again, we don't have any age uh, um, age cap, uh, so so I think that should answer this question. How much time will reference be given to write letters of references? How much time will references be given? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, oh, good question, Nathan. Uh, so that it has to be submitted with the application. Again, if you have one letter and you write an application that the second letter will follow shortly, as long as it, uh, I mean, this will delay. Uh, again, if it's the only thing that's missing is the second letter will, and otherwise your application is fine. We, we can provide you maybe with a conditional acceptance until we get the other letter. But I, uh, but again, you, you've seen the deadlines and uh, the letters should be submitted by those deadlines. Uh, they can send them directly. Uh, they, you have the mail address when you submit your applications. They can send it directly to us. Uh, some some em employers usually give you letters of reference that you take with you. More academic uh, re letter writers would like to submit directly to us. So both options are open. You can, if they if you have a letter already that you use somewhere else, you can attach it to your application. If you are, uh, if if they want to send it directly to us because of confidentiality reasons, uh, send it to the contact address and and we'll receive it from there. I think that uh, Nasra has a has a good question. What is the difference between this course and the sustainable finance and development specialization option in the masters in international economics? Nathan, you want to take this one? Yeah, the main difference. This is much more practice oriented, uh, so you don't take as much economics. I mean, in the in the two year, it's the the, the specialization in, in in the econ is two years. You have to take a full suite of econ courses, and uh, you have to write a thesis, a research thesis. So uh, it's it's a different type of degree. It's an excellent degree. I mean, we <laughs> created it as well, but it caters. Uh, less directly to people who want to be employed immediately in the private sector. I mean, what we do in this in this uh, in this uh, program is equip you with tools that are demanded by private, the private financial sector or the major financial investors could be the DFIs like the IFC or the Inter-American Bank or the African Development Bank or any one of these. But this is kind of something more practical. Plus, in, and because of its more practicality, you also have the internships in the industry and everything which is uh, uh, geared towards more of a professional degree as opposed to a uh, uh, two-year master, which is, uh, which again is much more analytical, more deep, and has a thesis with a research uh, component as well. Okay, guys, I think we have reached uh, 4 p.m., which is exactly the time that we have um, allotted to, to this session. If there are no more other questions, uh, I think we should uh, slowly wrap it up, Nathan, no? Yeah, we, we uh, reached our, our, our time limit, so uh, thank you for participating. Thank you for asking a uh, question. This meeting was recorded, so uh, we will have the recording available, so you can... Uh, revisit it yourselves or share it with your friends uh, or those people who couldn't made it, uh, make it today. Uh, and feel free to address us uh, through uh, our contact, uh, which reaches us. In the, in the main page of the program, you also have a book me option where you can talk with me privately for 15 minutes. Uh, there's a book me option and you can book uh, an individual video chat uh, uh, throughout this uh, application period. So again, thank you very much, and uh, we hope to see you uh, next year here at the Geneva Graduate Institute. Thank Bye -bye. you, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, and uh, please do reach out uh, in case of any questions. We're here for you, okay? Have a great break.